I had a couple of intake tubes from 49cc and 150cc scooters that hardened over the years. It made them tough to install and caused sealing issues from the lack of flexibility. Here you can see the difference in a new part and an aged part. The old part is difficult to squeeze or maneuver and returns to shape slowly and feels hard compared to the new part. These Chinese airbox parts are readily available and cheap, so it makes sense to replace them, but in some applications parts can be much tougher to come by and expensive, so I thought it could be useful to do a few tests on my old rubber intake tubing. The easiest way for temporarily softening rubber is to heat it. I've done this many times and it is very helpful for reinstalling these stiff rubber parts even though the rubber hardens quickly as it cools. I've always used a heat gun for it, being careful not to heat one spot too long and damage the rubber. Even a hair dryer should work. Others put rubber items in hot water to soften them, but you have to be careful not to use water so hot that it melts your parts. I was interested in a more permanent solution, and after a lot of searching, reading, and watching, I found that soaking in wintergreen oil or brake fluid seemed to be the most common methods for softening rubber, and there were a few others that I wanted to check out as well. Wintergreen oil is also called methyl salicylate, and you may be able to find it at a pharmacy, but I bought mine on eBay at $14 for 4 ounces shipped. A 3 to 1 mixture of isopropyl alcohol and wintergreen oil look like the widely used solution. That's 3 parts alcohol to 1 part wintergreen oil. Because large quantities of wintergreen oil for soaking larger parts would be expensive, I also wanted to try a 5 to 1 mixture to see if it was effective. There is also alcohol available with methyl salicylate included, and a bottle was less than $2. I don't think it has very much wintergreen oil in it, but I couldn't resist trying it at that price. Brake fluid is used straight, or undiluted, for soaking rubber and is easy to find at auto parts stores or nearly anywhere with a small automotive product section for just a few bucks. I also wanted to try automatic transmission fluid, or ATF. It is known to swell some types of rubber, and I saw a few mixed reports about it while I was searching. ATF is also easy to find at most auto parts sections, at a low cost. At that point I had five different fluids that I wanted to try, but only two old inlet tubes, so I cut them into small pieces using a utility knife with a heated blade. That gave me more small pieces than I needed, so I checked them over and kept seven pieces of each tube that were closest in stiffness and feel. Because of design differences, not every piece was exactly the same, but I did end up with all samples being very similar after discarding a few. This left me with one piece of a 49cc and 150cc intake tube for each type of fluid, and two pieces of each tube left for controls. I use the term controls loosely since individual pieces vary to some degree, but they would give me a way to compare untreated rubber to treated rubber easily. I washed all pieces in dish soap and water in hopes of removing most sorts of contamination and then let them dry. 24 ounce plastic food containers would be used for each fluid test, but I wanted to use the same amount of liquid for each chemical or mixture, and I needed to know how much total fluid was needed so I could figure out what I needed to achieve the mix ratios for wintergreen oil and alcohol. I placed two of the larger samples into a container and then covered them with water and measured the amount of water needed. I came up with 220 milliliters, so that's the amount I used for each type of fluid. I labeled a lid for each container and then began setting up the tests. I started by putting the four control pieces into a container and then sealing it. All containers were sealed for the test because some of the concoctions could evaporate if left open. Then I poured in 220 milliliters of the 70% alcohol with wintergreen oil into a container and added a 49cc and a 150cc rubber piece. The next container was filled with 165 milliliters of 91% isopropyl alcohol and 55 milliliters of wintergreen oil for a 3 to 1 mixture before one of each intake piece was put in. 183 milliliters of alcohol and 37 milliliters of wintergreen oil were poured into the next container to make a 5 to 1 mixture for the parts to soak in. Then I added 220 milliliters of DOT3 brake fluid and ATF into separate containers and sealed one of each part in them as well. 
I should note that cross-contamination was avoided to the best of my ability along the way by cleaning and drying the measuring device and anything else that touched the chemicals. With everything set up, it became a waiting game. I did the first check after a 24-hour soak and most of the parts had not noticeably changed, but the ones in wintergreen oil mixtures had already began to soften and I noticed that the wintergreen mixtures were darker. The more potent 3 to 1 mix changed the most and was a definite improvement, but it was not as soft or supple yet as I would hope for it to end up. The 5 to 1 mix was only a minor change, but still an improvement. I resealed everything and let the rubber soak for another 24 hours to total 48 hours in the fluids. Once again, the wintergreen oil and alcohol mixtures had improved, and the rest had not obviously changed to my perception. The 3 to 1 mix continued to show the most softening of the rubber parts, but I felt that they should still be softer for them to feel restored. The 5 to 1 mixture seemed to work better on the 150cc intake piece than on the 49cc piece. There was an easily detectable change in the 150cc piece, while the 49cc part hadn't changed a whole lot but was softer than before. I let everything sit for another 48 hours for a total of 96 hours or 4 days soak time and check them again. At that point, ATF and the pre-mixed alcohol in wintergreen were still showing no signs of improvement, but the brake fluid was starting to make a noticeable difference. It wasn't much of a change, but it did seem that the brake fluid was slowly improving the flexibility of the rubber parts. The 3 to 1 wintergreen and alcohol mixture had softened both parts pretty well, and I didn't really expect them to get much better than they were. The 5 to 1 mix had also softened the rubber parts more from the last check, again with the 150cc part changing the most. I waited another 3 days to make it a full week soak before reviewing the parts again. I still couldn't tell any difference in the parts soaked in ATF or the pre-mixed alcohol in wintergreen. The part soaked in brake fluid improved a little more since the prior check, as did the part soaked in the wintergreen mixture. The 150cc parts were changing more than the 49cc parts in both cases. I couldn't really tell if the 3 to 1 mixture had made the parts much different than the last check. I gave the parts another check after an additional week for a two week total soak time. This was my last check of them in fluids, so I removed all of the pieces and wiped them off as I inspected them. The pre-mixed alcohol and wintergreen solution had still done nothing that I could tell. The ATF soaked parts felt the same, and the only change I noticed was that they looked a little bit darker. Brake fluid softened the 150cc intake piece pretty well, though not as much as the wintergreen mixes. The 49cc part did improve, but not as much as the 150cc part. The 5 to 1 mixture was a little better than the brake fluid on the 49cc part, and the 150cc part was very soft. The parts in the 3 to 1 mixture seemed restored or better to me, as far as flexibility and softness were concerned. I think they may have been softer than the new parts. I have heard many reports that parts may swell during this process, but I didn't have any accurate way to measure that, so I can't really comment on swelling with accuracy. Before calling the tests finished, I let all of the parts sit in their containers without the fluids and with the lids off for two weeks to see how they responded to normal conditions after soaking. 
The parts that were in the ATF didn't seem any different than when they were just removed. Still a little bit darker in appearance, but no softer than before the experiment. The intake pieces from the premixed alcohol and methyl salicylate didn't change. The brake fluid soaked parts seemed to have sweated out brake fluid or oils of some sort and were not as soft as when they were fresh out of the brake fluid bath. They were still softer than without soaking, but it was no longer a big change. The parts that came out of wintergreen oil mixtures also firmed up some, but not as much as the brake fluid parts. The 150cc intake piece from the 5 to 1 mix was still soft and flexible, while the 49cc piece was not as much improved. Both parts from the 3 to 1 mixture remained greatly improved from their original states, again with the 150cc piece being the softest and most flexible of the two. All parts soaked in any kind of wintergreen mixtures were left with a minty smell, even after the two week rest. Before ending my experiments, I did want to try one last thing. The wintergreen oil had proven to me that it can soften rubber, especially in a 3 to 1 mixture, but it would be somewhat cost prohibitive for larger parts because of the amount required for a soak. I read reports of multiple parties heating varying amounts of wintergreen oil in water and allowing the rubber parts to sit for small amounts of time to soften them. I didn't want to try this inside because I feared the heated wintergreen oil could produce a strong smell, so I planned to use a metal bucket and a barbecue grill for my test. I poured one gallon of water into the bucket and then added all of the wintergreen oil that I had left, which was 50 milliliters, for about a 75 to 1 mixture of water to wintergreen oil. I used two rubber pieces that were controls for the previous experiment and two that the 70% premixed alcohol didn't seem to change. I didn't want the rubber parts to melt on the bottom of the bucket, so I used a piece of wire to suspend them fully immersed in the solution but not touching the bucket. Being water and oil, the two chemicals don't mix, and the wintergreen oil sat on the bottom of the bucket until temperatures approached 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Once hot, the wintergreen smell was very potent, and my eyes were even irritated when I leaned over to look into the bucket, so I would not suggest trying this in any enclosed area. My goal was to keep the temperature around 200 to 210 degrees, but that proved to be difficult to regulate on my grill, and temps did get up to a mild boil. After reaching boiling temps, I saw dark residue in the mixture that I assumed to be melted rubber. I left the parts in hot water for 15 minutes and then removed the bucket from heat and removed the parts from the hot liquid. The parts were very soft and obviously partially melted from the heat, leaving behind black residue on anything they touched until they cooled completely. Even once cooled to room temperature, the rubber remained very soft. It has been a few days now and the rubber is still softer than the best results from the soaking test, but they are also noticeably swollen. Now let me sum up what I found during all of my experiments. If you just want to soften a part long enough to install it, a heat gun works great. Soaking in the 70% alcohol and methyl salicylate straight from a bottle seemed to do nothing. Soaking in ATF may have restored the appearance of rubber to make it a bit darker and shinier, but did not soften it. Soaking in brake fluid did soften the rubber parts, but after sitting they began to sweat and firm up, so I'm not sure how long this effect will last and I wouldn't want my parts to sweat chemicals. Soaking in a 5 to 1 mixture of alcohol and wintergreen oil did improve the flexibility and softness of the rubber, but not as much as the 3 to 1 mixture. If I were going to soak parts, I would definitely choose the 3 to 1 mixture because it provided a good end result of rubber that felt flexible and soft as new to me. The big downside to the 3 to 1 mixture is the cost, especially if you were trying to soften large pieces. I would try it if I had a rare or expensive small part for sure, but not for parts that can be easily and cheaply replaced. All of the soaking tests showed that different types of rubber will respond in different ways, so I can't say that any of these methods are a sure bet. Heated water with wintergreen oil was very effective at softening the rubber parts, but it also seems that there's a fine line between hot enough and too hot, and once you cross that line you may damage the parts that you're trying to restore. 
I think it would at least be worth trying the hot water and wintergreen oil method for large parts, but in some way that allowed greater control of the temperature. It may still be risky for ruining parts by melting or from swelling, and it's not something that I would try in anything less than a well-ventilated area. Please like, share, and subscribe for more if you found this video helpful or interesting. Thanks for watching.